Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. Want to talk about the Intel Retail Cooler again. Uh, I talked about this. This is the cooler that comes with the i7-10700, the i9-10900 processors, and how terrible it was. But part of the reason it was terrible is the BIOS manufacturers, excuse me, motherboard manufacturers were cheating in the BIOS a little bit. See, the TDP, or Thermal Design Profile, I think is what that stands for, it calls for this, those chips to only draw 65 watts. And that means that this, this cooler could technically cool those processors when uh, they're only drawing 65 watts. Now, the most recent BIOSes from MSI seem to recognize the fact that some people are actually using this terrible cooler instead of what they should be using, which is a tower cooler like this one. And then if you look in the BIOS, there's a section for um, cooling tuning or CPU cooler tuning. And if I set it to boxed cooler, which is the one that comes in the box with the processor, it limits the long-term power limit to 65 watts. Now, let me, let me say that again. It's 65 watts is PL1 long, it's, PL1 is the long-term power limit. So this chip can temporarily go above the long-term power limit of 65 watts, but only for a short period of time. And then that, that rule kicks in and says, whoa, 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 it's been like 20 seconds, you gotta drop back down to 65 watts because we don't wanna melt the processor. Because you see, before this setting was in there, they were sending probably 125 watts at that processor, which is more than that cooler can handle. And what it was doing is, it was thermally throttling. It was hitting 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of water, of course, and then throttling down and just hovering right at that 100 degrees, which is not good for your processor. So MSI, I guess, realized some people are actually using the retail cooler that came with the chip. And so they put in this this ability to say that, to say that's what cooler you're using. But what does that do to your performance? So right now, um, I'm gonna introduce a 20 thread load. This is a 10 core chip with hyper threading. So 20 total threads. I'm gonna give it a 100% 20 thread load. You see where we're hitting 4.6 gigahertz on all cores. That's pretty darn good. 4.5, something like that. But we're going above the 65 watt limit right now. Any second now, the long term power limit rule is going to kick in and the chip's going to drop to 65 watts and boom, we're suddenly now we're running 3.3. And so if you're running a, a workloads that consistently max out your chip, you're either bouncing off the 100 degree mark or if you set your BIOS correctly like this one, your, your BIOS is, is helping you out by limiting the power going to that chip to 65 watts so that this puny little cooler can still keep it cool. So um, I don't know if you could see that happen or not, so I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to stop our torture test. And then I'm going to start it again. So we start out at 4.6. We're, we're under the short-term power limits, and then we go to long-term power limits, which drops the processor all the way down to 3.3 gigahertz. But what if we have a tower cooler? Because we actually do have a tower cooler on this one. And what if we go into the BIOS and tell the BIOS, hey, I have a tower cooler. Give me, give me some more juice. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we're heading back into the BIOS here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell that, that um, cooling tuner thing that we have a tower cooler. So we don't have a boxed cooler anymore. We've got a tower cooler. So 
it's going to go from 65 watts and here it says 288 watts i don't know i don't think it's really going to send ever send 288 watts to this processor that's a lot of power but the bottom line is it's going to send more power to the chip and so we're just going to save and exit and we're going to go back into windows and see what that does for us so again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the task manager. I'm going to set uh, or start a 20 thread load on this processor. Again, it's 10 cores, 20 threads. And we're going to see, will it stay at 4.6 gigahertz or not? So opening up the task manager, opening up Prime 95. And right now we're, we're at 4.8-ish. We're going to start the test. We're at 4.6 now, all cores, 4.6. And I'll zoom in on that so you can see. Um, so we're, we're now running the same test we ran a minute ago. The only change we've made is we've told the BIOS, I have a tower air cooler. Therefore, it's okay, you can break the rules. You can send the chip more than 65 watts, it's okay. Go ahead and send me some more power. And you'll notice, 4.6 just stays there and it'll run that all day long as long as we don't hit our thermal limit of 100 degrees which we won't it'll run 4.6 on a 100 percent load all day long now as i say that it dropped just a hair but you can see the difference so if you're running consistently running workloads that load all 10 cores 20 threads and you have one of these chips and you're running it on the boxed terrible cooler, uh, you're either pegging yourself at 100 degrees Celsius and throttling, or you've got your BIOS set right, and it's limiting the power to 65 watch, watts, which is causing your speed to drop to 3.3 you know, gigahertz or so. You're gonna drop the, three, the low threes one way or the other, either by thermal throttling or by power limit, one or the two is going to happen if you're using this this uh, boxed cooler and so if you're looking at a system from someone other than us and it comes with a 10700 or a 10900 you know you might want to look into what kind of cooler it's coming with because you can see it can make a pretty big difference in performance